I don't usually want to rely on wishy-washy vloggy personal content to pad out the weeks, but since I just delayed a video last week and haven't had time to flesh out a greater topic this week, I thought I'd just dive into what's been happening to me lately. I thought it was interesting. You might as well. In short, I spent the past week traveling overseas to an academic games conference in Sweden before returning home for even more gamey shenanigans at Momocon. For the record, I paid my own admission into the convention, but I was flown out, wined, and dined on the way to the conference. And note, the purpose of this conference was not to market, preview, or review anything, but it was rather put on for the sake of education. It wasn't paid for by any developers or publishers, instead by a university funded by the tax dollars of Swedish citizens. I was under no obligation to make a video about this at all, but I am under an obligation to meet this Thursday deadline I've set for myself and I'm already behind for the Witcher and Castlevania stuff I'm gonna start doing next week, so here we go. The Gotlands Games Conference is a yearly event held by the Department of Game Design of Uppsala University, whose campus is located in the seaside castle town of Visby. So I had two days in the city before the conference to check out the local food, facilities, recreation, and entertainment. From my perspective on the ground, GGC feels like a mock GDC, a little controlled environment housing competition between a hundred or so students where the stakes and production values are still high enough to prepare them for the real thing in San Francisco, or Cologne, in Europe's case, I guess. I'm not super familiar with how games development courses are run these days, but I was really surprised by the lengths they went to to emulate the real pressures of swimming with the sharks. Before the show floor opened up, the students had to do a presentation to a jury of notable personalities. A five-minute slideshow with a trailer and a follow-up Q&A session felt a lot like a mock pitch for a panel of mock investors. And I really have to wonder if the curriculum in the future will be involving a mock Kickstarter. The show floor opened up like a mock indie games festival, except the games here were all their year-end final projects. But apparently it's customary in Sweden to take the initiative to make market-ready products for a school project. I was assigned to judge the first-year students, and the motif they were forced to develop games under was called Theme Park. They were supposed to use non-traditional input methods with elaborate contraptions like what you'd see in a theme park. One game was controlled with a bicycle pump, another used a rock band drum kit. But unsurprisingly, the best of these first-year games all used much more traditional inputs. Summit Chasers used just a joystick and two buttons. Workspace Warfare was controlled by just swiping on a touchscreen. Frog Climbers, my favorite game on the show floor, was controlled by just two joysticks with two buttons on them. It's a Mount Your Friends or GURP clone that takes the hilarity of flopping 2D ragdolls around to the next logical step of making it a real-time multiplayer competition where you're racing with an opponent, or over an opponent, to the top of a tower to win. It wouldn't surprise me at all to see this on Steam soon, and then see a couple inevitable days of YouTubers laughing their asses off at it. Apparently, Sweden's economy is well off enough to consider healthcare and education a public right, but not bathrooms. And they're also big on workers' rights. I was told that once you have a job, you're in a pretty empowered position. But these students were also telling me that the process of competing, networking, and proving yourself well enough to get that job is a hellish endeavor that often leads to endless internships. So it makes sense that a lot of games done by these students didn't actually use a creative input method, since they were done by people who wanted to hit the ground running with a sellable project to make ends meet after graduating. Their grades be damned. So besides judging these games and giving the students feedback and impressions, my other task was to deliver a talk. And unfortunately, after a couple days of breathing in exotic foreign air full of exotic foreign germs, I lost my voice. Video games are pretty cool, I guess. That's not gonna work. I, I, can't, I can't talk like that. I locked myself in my room for a day and tried everything I could to do to recover. I pulled an all-nighter to polish up the presentation, and when the day finally came, I just soldiered through it, talking for an hour on a stage in front of lots of people in the only low tones I could muster. 
The topic was horribly cliché. It's about movies and games, and was mostly a critique of the assumptions used by GGC's own theme text, but I'm proud of what I managed to squeak out. And a full recording of that embarrassing hour will be available on the Gotland Games YouTube channel soon. Until then, the show ended complete with an awards ceremony and an after-party, after which I spent another all-nighter touring the city and seeing the sights because the sun rises at like 2.30 a.m. over there and you can just stay up all night and not even know it. It's awesome! But I still couldn't relax, even after getting home, because then I had to go to Momocon. Momocon is an anime and gaming convention that's been gracing the streets of Atlanta for about 10 years now. But this year it morphed into some kind of Frankenstein Together companion piece to Dragon Con, giving the city an indie gaming and YouTuber presence that usually gets forgotten by the broadness of Dragon Con's breadth. My attendance there was marked with a controversy over harassing attendees and clueless security guards and management, while the technical aspect of the con's programming was a freak show of interrupted panels, broken projectors, and some really nervous speakers when you toured outside the lineup of invited guests. It's important to note that Momocon had free admission up till 2012, and with the increasing amenities following increasing prices came a torrent of demand from an awful lot of nerds in this awfully nerdy city who want these cons desperately, despite the fact that most of them happened on the other side of the continent. Last year saw an attendance of just under 15,000 people, whereas just one year before they had 12,000, but this time they hit 23,000 and they seem to be bursting at the seams with managing all their newfound demand and attention, as well as a change of venue. Momocon hasn't previously been on the gaming radar, but with their new additions, we got an indie show floor, an award ceremony, and a guest lineup that seems more on par with who you'd see showing up at a MAGFest or SGC. It was a complete and utter shit show that made DragonCon look like a well-oiled machine in comparison, but I still had a blast. Among the upcoming games exhibited were Brawlhalla, a 2D artsy Smash Brothers clone with some appealing controls and characters whose moves seem a bit hard to read in its current state. There was also Gridmasters, a battle network spin on a fighting game brawler that forces players and their moves onto a real-time square grid. But my favorite game was called... Just Shapes and Beats. You are a shape, and you must dodge hazards to a beat. It's like a side-scrolling super hexagon. There's some nice tweened slickness to your movement and its presentation, and it's ultimately an expression of some of the most raw, simple, and satisfying thrills of what makes a good old video game reflex test so gratifying. It wouldn't worked if it was less polished, if the music was less catchy, or if the incoming obstacles were telegraphed slightly less visibly. So besides that, I spent the weekend showing the best friends around the city, which in true Momocon fashion ended with us getting kicked out of two different locations for two different recording sessions. It was a wreck. An enjoyable and hilarious wreck. And you can actually check it out right now. So I hate to come back home with a video like this, but hopefully it explains the video's delays, since this stuff may be way too complicated to explain on like a Twitter or whatever. I might have skipped a week and returned with this wishy-washy vloggy bloggy blob, but I do have work to show for it. Like I said, an hour-long video of my GGC talk will be going up on the Gotland Games channel shortly, and a two-hour podcast with the Super Best Friends is available now on this annotated link. It's been one hell of a weekend, following one hell of a week, and I can't wait to get back into the regular rotation of things. Until then, have a good one, and I'll be back in action next time, now that I've had a few days to rev up and get rolling again.